So, 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 so sitting here, B, I want to ask you, man, what, when you looking at worth and value in your life, what, what are you placing worth and value on, right? That is not in line with the kingdom. Like this, it's not in line with what God wants us to have or to really be and to really be thinking about. Yeah, and the struggle with these things is they're good things, right. like finding worth uh, or, or riches or, or cars or family or anything that we place worth in intellect. Any of these things, they're not inherently bad. The the problem is is when we elevate them mm -hmm. over God, right. um, that becomes the problem. And so for me, growing up, um, where I grew up, I grew up in New York, um, and there you were either black, Hispanic, or Middle Eastern. And so for me, I stuck out like a sore thumb. Mm -hmm. You know, I was always the tallest kid, always the lightest kid. <laughs> and so we didn't have white people in our school. I was the I white person. Albano, man. I, 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 had to, I had to put it where I had to graduate to light skin. You know, for those who, who can't see, um, I suffer from... SCS, and, and if you don't know what that is, that, that's Steph Curry syndrome. <laughs> so so um, both my, my parents are black. My mama black, my daddy black. <laughs> I come out and I guess I didn't bake too long or whatever yeah. the case may be. Um, and so you when different. you're a kid, <laughs> it, you, you different. <laughs> you different. And, and, and um, People would pick up on that, especially when you're little kids. And now as I get older, I understand the doctrine of man and right. just the depravity and the heart of man. Right. Um, just realizing that we would look for differences to exploit them mm -hmm. and ridicule another person. Mm -hmm. And I always want to be very careful when I say this because I don't ever want to play the victim. I think I victimize my friends more than they victimize me because... Mm -hmm you learn quickly um, that everybody's got their flaw. Right. Everybody's got something wrong with them, and mine's was just more obvious than the other. Right. And so it caused me to not get down. And, and I would enjoy going back and forth, especially with people I knew. This is, this is all we did was just crack jokes on each other. Right. But my thing was, like I said, before I even became a Christian, I understood the depravity of man. Mm -hmm. um, not simply because of the, the jokes and the ridicule I would receive, but what I would say to other people. You I would be it. just as yeah. as mean and as cruel to mm -hmm. other people because I was like, okay, you said that about me, I got you. And I was never, I could never freestyle, but I could yeah. write yeah. my pen game. <laughs> my pen game is sharp. So you give me, give me a couple hours, I'm going to roast you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to roast you. And so I understood just... Just like I said, the doctrine of depravity and then even my own wickedness and responding with just as much vitriol that was hurled toward me. And so even though I know some people struggle with it, especially those who are biracial, um, I can say I identify with them in a sense where it's like, these are my own people who would ostracize me. And so from early on, I understood racism wasn't just the white man who who lynched black people i understood that even my own people were just as mean and as cruel mm -hmm. because i'm just i'm just like you but a couple shades lighter mm -hmm. and it's like on the other side I, I understand someone who you know may have grown up where i think the perception of of being light-skinned is that you've got it good but because i didn't grow up in the suburbs you know i wasn't like you know the other side so i grew up mm -hmm. with people who who I was the minority. Right. I was the ostracized. And if I'm gonna be honest, it did hurt me. You know, trying to find fit in, trying to find that identity, where did that I belong? Um and so I was it always was something that, that pulled at me. And so even when I became a Christian and I would, you know, filter racism, I would always filter it as a human condition not something that plagued a particular group. It wasn't just a white person right. who suffered from this ailment. It was all people, it was a human condition. And so um, just realizing that, man, if I put so much stock in who I am, my race, it's like, what happens when I am ostracized? Mm -hmm. You know, when 
the hate is, and I, I don't want to call it hate, but like I said, the acceptance um, wasn't there in the sense where I was always embraced. And I think after a while, you become friends with people, they embrace you. Mm -hmm. But just immediately off the back, like you just said, albino, mm -hmm. or is your mama white, your dad? No, nah, mm -hmm. both, both my parents is black, right. you know? Right. Even my cousins would make fun of me, you know? And <laughs> right. they, they my family, you adopted, right. you know? They, they my family. Um, and so just clinging to to um, my identity was found in, in my race. And it's like when I wasn't accepted by that, it's like, what, what do you do? And so becoming a Christian definitely helped filter all of that where now as a Christian, as I was saying last week, I don't reject my culture, my race, but it's like I filter it through. I have, I'm sensitive to the things that plague my culture and my race and it's like how can I be missional to them how can I understand that hey this isn't a black issue a white issue this is a human issue this is a heart condition that anything because like I said you can have people who are all the same shade look at white people they still have friction within that right even black people I think I was um, listening to something just even in South Africa how they would divide those in South Africa because what their nose look different mm -hmm. or earlobes or something like that. Whatever, Maybe how far we go. How far we'll go just to say, hey, you're different than me. And because you're different than me, I'm going to discriminate against you. Mm -hmm. And so now here in America, because it's so obvious, we can make these distinctions based off of, of race or not even race, just skin tone, even within our own community. Because in the black community, that's a huge thing. Oh, yeah. Light skin, dark skin, all, all of this, all of this animosity that we have toward each other. And it's like. We all the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we literally all the same. Yeah. Um, and so for me, that was always a struggle. And, and if I'm going to be completely honest with you, I'm so glad my daughter has some color. <laughs> like, I'm so glad. And it's like even, um, and I don't think I've even said this um, publicly, because I grew up with my stepfather and um, just finding validation in him, even I'm sure he would get the stage, but he was dark skinned. Mm -hmm. And so, um, like when people would see my mother, cause my mother, she's like brown skin and then my stepfather and they're like, they see me and they're like, what's up? It don't make no sense. <laughs> and even my biological father, he's the same, uh, brown skin as well. But it's like, wait, what happened? You know? And just having to just come to the acknowledgement that this is how God made me. And it's like, my worth and my value is not found in that now. Do I ignore it? Absolutely not. Right, right. Absolutely not. But when it comes to what is uh, elevated first, it's Christ. It's Christ that my identity is rooted in that because that's not conditional. That's eternal. Right. My, my, my stance with who Christ is. And because we don't identify with who Christ, when we see things that happen and we're faced with racism, it like cripples us because we're like, I find everything in that right and when it's it's um it's uh someone comes against it it's like the whole world is like yeah it's like shaking or even yeah. like, not even going race but it's like someone who all they're about is success money right what happens right. when they lose that success and their money their whole life is down is down yeah we so, see it. We so see that it. that that was one of my biggest things that i found worth and value and not that to say it's a bad thing it's a it's a great thing but like I said, that's not the primary thing where I look to for my worth and value. My worth and value is has to be rooted in Christ because that's unwavering, that's unconditional, that's eternal, and that will um, that will never change. Um, not that your race will change, but right, it right. won't. It won't. Um, anything that comes against it, it's like I'm I'm firmly planted in where I stand with with Christ. Even any outside the distractions that we we witness because of. Racism or whatever the case may be. Stop.